Hey guys, I'm Rad Rat, and I'm back with an all new series called Retro Rippers. This time we're going to find out what happened to Jeremy Klein. Let's get started. Welcome to my new series Retro Rippers, where I let you know what's going on with all of your skate idols from years ago. Um, aside from this, I also do game reviews, trick histories, and even trick tips on the Shred School. Also, I answer all of your questions directly on Ask Rad Rat. Subscribe so you can learn something new about skateboarding and skateboard history every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So today we're talking about Jeremy Klein. He was a huge name in skateboarding throughout the whole 90s and a bit into the 2000s as well. Um, he also launched Hookups, which I was shocked to discover is actually still running today. And I'll talk about that in a second, but first let's just talk about Jeremy and how he blew up. So. Klein, he was on Flow for Powell for a little while, and then he moved on to World Industries. This is some footage of him winning a street contest in 88. And if you have a chance, watch the full video on YouTube. The commentary is hilarious. Uh, when he finally quit World, he told Rocco that he was going to quit, and then Rocco fired him, sort of like, you can't quit, you're fired, which was kind of a funny story if you look into that. Uh, but a little bit after that, World turned him pro, that was in 1989 and nobody really knew who he was yet. His decks weren't exactly selling out uh, until this video part came out. So Klein's video part in Rubbish Heap was a legendary. He had a lot of really fast, powerful tricks, and he also did a lot of tech stuff, like this kickflip 5-0, and also this really steep backside 180 through 60 flip. He also managed to 180 nose grind and backside Smith on a handrail way back then. But maybe even most famously, he also focused Rodney's board, which symbolically ended his freestyle career. Jeremy also made the term focus popular too, um, although he actually says that he got the name from Spike Jones, who told him he had to focus on hitting the ground under the deck to, in order to break it. One other thing Klein was known for is avoiding the trends. So he never really got into pressure flips and late flips and anything like that. When he was asked why, he simply said that he hated them. So he stuck to what he liked doing, and it ended up being the direction skateboarding later went in anyway. So his early footage actually still holds up because of that. A few years later in 1992, Tony Hawk started Birdhouse. He invited Steve Barra, Willie Santos, and Jeremy Klein to join. Birdhouse at that time made some of the craziest videos. Just look at some of this stuff from the end. So they went on these missions to grind all these store signs or gas station signs and stuff like that. He said that the signs themselves didn't grind, so they had to take some measurements of the sign, go back and make a covering for it that actually would grind, and then they would just go out and shoot it. They wouldn't get permission or permits or anything like that. Uh, one time, they thought they were going to be caught because a fire truck pulled up, but the fact that they had lights and generators and all that kind of stuff made it look really legitimate, and people just assumed that they were supposed to be there. Uh, but they did all kinds of other crazy stuff and crazy skits too, like lighting themselves on fire. So Klein started hookups. So I wasn't able to get a very firm date on exactly when this happened because it kind of started as a soft launch. At first it was just t-shirts, but then it slowly built up from there. It was probably around 93 because they had a hookups video in 94. Um, hookups itself is kind of a child company of Birdhouse. So Klein never actually left the Birdhouse team. This was just kind of a side project. Now, when I first started skating in the early 2000s, everyone knew what Hookups was. It was in all the mail order catalogs and that kind of stuff. And they were always known for that really weird anime art that they used. Always had girls in bikinis or even less. I never knew anyone who owned one. Even if you were into that kind of stuff, you wouldn't necessarily want it on your board, but they were actually pretty huge back in the day. Jeremy talks about the art style of the company and he simply said that he liked anime and he thought there wasn't enough of it around. He had gotten his first computer and he got permission from Birdhouse and he just started making stuff. So like I said, they started off with t-shirts, stickers, that kind of stuff. But by 94, they had a team in Dex. And in 95, it was really starting to take off and they actually made shoes. Now you may have known about this because a couple years ago in 2015, uh, Etnies did a re-release of that original hookup shoe. Uh, but the original actually didn't last that long. Jeremy said that one order of shoes would cost a million dollars. And at first they were doing pretty well because there wasn't a ton of competition from other skate brands, but as more and more skate shoes started to come out, they bailed out of that business just because the risk was too high. Um, hookups was big from 1996 to 1999, according to Klein, those were its really big years 
but it started to decline after that. They put out a video called Destroying America in 2001, which was actually pretty well received. It was just a crazy video where they run over trees in a van and just do all kinds of weird stuff. It was kind of like a tour video that was more focused on the tour stuff rather than the skating, but the skating is not bad. It has Gons in it, it has Tony Hawk, so it was definitely something. Uh, this whole time though, he was still on Birdhouse, but his relationship with Birdhouse ended in 2008. Klein says, what made me retire my board was because Birdhouse made me. I would have liked to have kept it going. I love skating and I love having a board out with cool graphics on it, but Birdhouse was being sold at the time and there were some weird things going on over there. I just stopped working for them, which is pretty much why that all happened. So in 2010, his old teammate, Willie Santos, he made a guest board for him on his own company, Willie's Workshop. But what about right now? What is he up to right now in 2017? Well, he actually still skates and he runs two skateboard companies. Surprisingly, the first one is Hookups. I was, I was blown away to find out that there's, they're not only back, but they actually never stopped making boards. They've been in business this whole time. Um, I'm just, I'm surprised there's still a market for this stuff. So you think back in the 90s, that kind of like the anime style, that was pretty fresh and new for people in America and it wasn't really around yet. Nobody really knew what it was. But today, that kind of anime style is really common and you might think of it more as being nerdy or weird. Uh, it's not like exotic and interesting. It's more about, you know, like if you have a anime bikini girl on your shirt, you're not some edgy, cool guy who's on the, you know, cusp of some other culture. You're more likely to be thought of, of the dude who's in love with his pillowcase, you know? But still, they're around, they're making t-shirts, sweaters, stickers, hats, uh, all kinds of other stuff. I can't show you half of the graphics they make, but you can check that out on your own if you want. They charge 60 to 65 bucks each these days, which makes sense because it's more of a small business now, so they don't get the bulk ordering and the economies of scale and that kind of stuff. Uh, the sizes start around eight and go up from there like a lot of brands these days. The other brand that he runs is called JK Industries, I think. The site is actually jeremykline.com and the banner right here, it actually says Kurain in Japanese katakana, which is as close to Klein as you can get. So it's either Klein Industries or JK Industries. But anyway, he makes silk screen boards there as opposed to the heat transfer stuff you see most places. The graphics are mostly anime and gaming, including a Pokemon one and even a Dragon Ball Z one. The prices are similar to hookups, but maybe actually a little bit higher, but you can also get them signed too. So that's what Jeremy's up to these days. He's still skating at 45 years old and he's still actively involved in skateboarding and the skateboard industry itself. So who do you wanna see me cover next time? Before you comment, look through the comments and see if anyone else nominated them already and then like that comment. That way the ones that more, the most people want will float to the top and I'll be able to find it really easily. If no one has, then comment it fresh. Also, let me know what you think about this series in general. It's still a little bit experimental, but I'm hoping to do more of these in the future if you guys like it. So let me know what you think below. Uh, also, I will be away on vacation all of next week and a little bit of the week after that. But all the videos are done uh, and they will be uploading at their normal times. But if you usually get your updates from me on Instagram or something, you might not see much there. Kind of depends on how the trip goes, if there's signal, all that kind of stuff. So I'm just letting you know about that up front. The videos will still be here, but just check YouTube. Don't rely on other stuff. Uh, but until next time, here's some more videos you might want to check out that I've done recently. And don't forget to hit the like button if you like the video and subscribe where you can watch videos here and learn something more about skateboarding three times a week. Skateboarding deserves to be documented. Thank you for watching.